Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today on Workshop Quick Takes, I'm doing another automotive repair. This one came up a bit unexpectedly, and it involved the cam synchronizer from the inline six in my 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ. Cam synchronizer serves a couple different purposes. In older models of this engine, because it was originally designed around a distributor, the distributor actually lives right on top of this device, or something very similar to it actually. And the other thing it does after being driven off the cam here is it turns the oil pump. On the newer ones with uh, coil unplug ignition, this here is just a synchronizer and there's a sensor that parks on top of it here. But eventually all things wear out. You can see there's some shaft in play on this one and it was starting to leak a lot of oil out the top and then back down and running down the engine. Enough that I was actually getting fresh drips on the driveway. So that's a lot of oil. It was time to deal with it. So let's get under the hood and see what it takes to replace this. It's about an hour and requires basic hand tools. All right, I'm working on a 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ today, and it seems that my cam synchronizer here has turned into kind of an oil well. At least that's as near as what I can figure, because I've got really bad contamination up here, and it doesn't seem to be coming from anywhere else. So let's go ahead and take the uh, cam sensor off the top here. Keep in mind, if you have an older XJ that uses a distributor, this is where the distributor would live, but on these newer ones with coil on plug, this is now just a cam position sensor. Screws here are hex head. Unfortunately, although there are many bolts on this that can be removed using metric, these are not two of them. You pretty much do need a 730 seconds to loosen those. This sensor here is not installed with a lot of torque. If you can't remove it with a uh, simple driver tool, then it's probably on too tight. Additionally, there is a Plastic snap-on connector here, electrical connector that needs to come off. Okay, there we go. I don't know for sure where the oil is coming from, but I can definitely see there's some oil sitting up in here. And it's up inside the sensor as well, which tells me it's been flung around in there. So this may be leaking from multiple points, but it seems very much the oil is now coming up through the central seal, which means I need to replace this whole assembly. Now the question is, what do we do to get it aligned? There's an alignment hole down here. I'm trying to figure where the other side of that is. Okay, you know what? I think I got lucky. It looks like the alignment hole here and here are lined up. Let me get a, a small uh, Allen key wrench and just see if I can poke it straight through there. If I can, I think we're in good shape. Oh, would you look at that? It looks like the engine actually stopped with the number one cylinder nearly top dead center. That's the uh, purpose of the alignment hole here. And if you're trying to install one of these fresh onto an engine and you don't know where it is, then you have to pull your number one spark plug and then make sure your number one cylinder is at top dead center. And that's not something I'm particularly good at showing, so I'm not going to bother. There's other places. But in this case, if you can pull this out and drop it back in with uh, this little screen piece at exactly the same position, then you should be fine. And in this case, I got lucky because it looks like it's actually lined up with the alignment holes. Sure enough, it goes right through. Now replacement unit didn't come with that. What it came with instead is this nifty little cap. So comparing that to this, if it points straight back, we're golden. So I just need to pull this one straight out and drop this one straight in with the cap on and we should be ready to do it. So just to be clear, if this hadn't aligned up so neatly as it did, what I could do is just turn the crankshaft until I either get my alignment pins lined up or in the case of this one, until my uh, nifty little cap lines up and then I'm good. And it looks like that's gonna be that bolt there, which I think will come out with a number 13 socket. Before I do that though, let's try and get some of the extra oil residue cleaned up from down there. This is foaming engine cleaner. I happen to choose gunk off the shelf because that's what's available, but I don't have any particular preference. I just want to get oil residue out of there so I clean things up a bit. One of the reasons for doing this, of course, is that I don't want any of that nastiness falling down in the engine if I can help it when I pull out the sensor or pull out the uh, cam synchronizer and replace it. I just have to start removing that, lift it straight out, check to make sure that the oil pump drive at the bottom, which comes off of this, is lined up still, and then put the new one in with a little bit of, yep. Yeah. Okay, it looks like that one will turn with a 13. Question is, How far? There we go. 
the rest of that might back out by hand. And it do. Hey, slippery little rascal. There we go. Pretty badly fouled up with oil sludge, so we'll want to clean that too. And now that I've gotten that out of the way, I can see a lot more residue down there, so we'll just try and hit that again. Now for the moment of truth, see if that pops straight off like it's supposed to. And no, it's glued down in there, which probably means I'm gonna have to pry it out. I think a small pry bar would probably be helpful. There we go. Kinda looks like that one had just like a little rubber seal down there. But yeah, it's full of wet oil in there, so odds are good it's been leaking up the top of the seal. Double check to make sure these are the same. And they are. Okay, so there we are. Let me see if I can just get any more of this off without filling up the hole there. Go ahead and just tuck that down in there. Clean a little bit more around that machined face without pushing anything down in the hole. Hopefully. This replacement unit by Dorman is just a slightly different design than the OE. The difference is this, the OE unit has those two holes that allow to you to align it for top dead center on cylinder number one. This one here, those would be normally right about here, but you'll see there's no holes at all and there's an O-ring. Purpose of this, don't want to lose that gasket, but we'll set it aside for a moment, is to try and keep the inside of the sensor position here completely clean. So you see, we still have the same uh, mechanism in here and the same kind of a detector, it's probably Hall effect there. But in this case, top dead center would be right there. And what they've done in order to allow you to align that is they've provided in the kit this little cap. If that snaps in and points directly at the back of the engine, then you are golden. But since it has that little thing in there, if you're not lined up, it's not going to drop in place until you get it turned around correctly. The other thing to watch for is I'm looking down in there and I see the oil pump is the screw is turned slightly so i need to figure out if this is going straight down in it's not going to line up so i need to take a screwdriver down in there and just turn it so that it's vertical and then it'll fit right down there you can kind of see is a uh, is the oil pump it's that screw head that you can kind of see in there that's actually turned by the cam synchronizer and that drives the oil pump so that needs to be lined up before i try and Put the new one back in. All right, looking at that again, we're almost lined up vertically, which is what my new synchronizer's oil drive shaft seems to need, so. Okay, next step, let's go ahead and get our gasket on there. I'm a big fan of Permatex Black. It's oil and heat resistant, seems to do well in these types of applications. The other thing it will do is it will also kind of glue the sensor in place a bit. So if there's any tendency of the uh, of this thing to want to try and walk in there, it's not going to. Okay. Next step. This needs to go down in there with the alignment cap in place. And because I have a helical cut gear, it's going to need to go in a slight angle like that and rotate if I remember correctly based on how the other one came out. So let us see if it will do that. Nope, we're off. Okay, so it's gonna walk back that way. Quite a bit in fact. If I do that, then it doesn't wanna line up with the oil pump. 
Maybe that's the problem. Okay, so maybe I do need to turn the oil pump back slightly. I overcompensated. And it looks like the gasket stayed on there. That's fine too. Maybe that'll work better. So. Oil pump still does not want to cooperate. Oh, there we go. Okay, look at that. We are in and hopefully lined up. This bracket needs to go back in place. And this time I also want the bolt a little tighter because it just did not feel like it was uh, securing it as the way it should be. Expected more torque on that. Okay, that's definitely tighter than it was when I found it, so hopefully. Well, that's tight now. So let's pull the cap off, just make sure everything still looks good. I'd say so. And here's my old sensor, which is sealed, so it should have still worked just fine, but it's full of oil residue, so since the new synchronizer came with a replacement, we'll go ahead and just start with that one and keep the other one there just in case. Again, this we are not trying to torque down excessively. It has those little flared uh, washers that kind of act as a lock. We're just trying to keep it from uh, vibrating off under normal operation. I'm gonna give it just a few minutes to let the Permatex set up a bit, and then we'll go for a test fire. Okay, while we're waiting on that Permatex to dry, let's take a look at the old one here that we just pulled out. Not sure if this is the OE unit or if it's already been replaced once before, but it matches what you expect from the OE unit, including this little alignment hole down here. But the other thing I'm noticing with this one down here is there's a fair amount of end play here that I didn't notice on the replacement unit, so that might be a, another sign of the gasket going out. In any case, if I'd ordered this from Napa, interestingly, there would have been a core return charge, so I guess they consider this rebuildable, but the dormant part that I bought from uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts did not. It was just 60 bucks, including tax straight up, and that was that. So got a nice little piece of machined aluminum here. Shame I can't do anything with it. Interesting. Oil pump drive on this one was keyed slightly off, but nonetheless, I turned out I did need to tweak that one just slightly to the side because again, beveled gear, as it drops into place, in order to face perfect straight back, you have to drop it in an angle so that you find the right set of teeth and then it rotates as it sets and then it ends up where it's supposed to be. This little piece normally sits right here. So what happens is there's that uh, sensor right there. So just as that starts to pass through, is when the number one cylinder has gone just a bit past top dead center and is starting to descend. So once you've synchronized, once this is synchronized to the position of the number one cylinder, the uh, engine computer can then from there calculate the position of any other cylinder and it knows when to uh, inject fuel and fire spark. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Um, we condensed that down to about 10 minutes. In reality, it takes about an hour, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, as for why this one went out when it did, I mean, there's definitely some play on the shaft here, so the seal was working loose, but the other thing that may have contributed to why it failed when it did is because I've switched this vehicle over to synthetic oil. I don't know what was being used by the previous owner, but it was probably just the regular stuff because it looked like their Carfax had a long history of just, you know, cheapest possible oil changes at what, like a Grease Monkey or Jiffy Lube or whatever. And, you know, that's fine. As long as it's done regularly, it works. But when you switch to synthetic, what it does is it starts actually dissolving and scraping out a lot of deposits that may have accumulated in the engine. And sometimes a consequence of that on an old engine is that you get leaks. But it's replaced now. Wasn't too expensive. Wasn't too hard. And it's working. So this is another one that you can do at home. Thanks for joining me today. See you next time. Has anyone seen my phone?